Hello, this is Builder Shed here, and today I'm going to teach you all how to install packages on Linux and, and show you all really how easy it, is to, easy it is to install a package on Linux. Installing packages on Linux is not hard at all, unlike what the common misconception likes to state. In fact, it's commonly joked that Linux users basically are like hackers when installing a browser. They like go full crazy on their keyboard like which is not the case at all I wouldn't even say that was the case a long time ago either unless you're coding your own web browser and like it, it's overall a misconception that you install like web browsers on Linux via like through like just play out typing a crap ton of stuff like a hacker on a keyboard that's a full-out misconception the closest you could probably get to that is probably one of the methods one of the methods I'm going to show but it's far easier and far less daunting than that so starting off with the first way to install a package on Linux it's going to be the first one you're going to be shown off the bat if you've installed some like Ubuntu or or any other distro that comes with GNOME and that that is going to be the software store a software center KDE Plasma comes with one too so don't worry if you're not using that but these are kind of a nice feature they can be slow but they're quite nice and they make installing packages extremely easy for anyone new to Linux so first of all oh it's basically downloading the software catalog aka the repos short for repositories which is basically where a lot of your, the software online is kept the packages or applications you download basically Linux systems keep entire like database you know as a repository that full of packages to make everything easier it's basically something that Linux has had for a while that is really nice to be honest and it's really a big positive Linux but it's no longer as big as a positive as, as it used to be because Windows now got its own package manager but Windows with its package manager like most people don't even have it yet even though the versions reach 1.0 so basically that's not even much of a thing many people can use so here this popped up so this is basically what for example the gnome software center looks like mainly same with similar to the pop shop etc it's a really nice place and no you don't need to enter your credit card number <laughs> or anything you, you don't buy stuff on this one you download it and no it's not it's not it's not bit torn <laughs> you're not torning movies or something these are all free apps you can download consent they were they were free consensually. They're not they're they're not basically programs that you'd have to nor pay for normally, but you're getting for free. No, that's not that. You're not getting Photoshop for free peeps. The thing is, basically phones and tablets have had some like this for a while. And I can show you right now. And Windows got it like in two thousand like in with Windows eight. It was the Microsoft Store, but you buy stuff here, through here too. But there's also free games you install. But not to forget, iMacs have it too. But thing is, software centers on Linux have far more software in them, and are also, and you're also like, everything's free in a soft in, in a Linux software center, most of the time. But for GNOME software, I'm, I haven't seen anything that's required any money. And also, like I said, Mac and Windows store, like app stores, just don't have much software at all. So that's just one thing to mention. Unlike phones and tablets, which have a crap ton of their app stores. But this is for the computer side thing. So I think this show off as 
So basically it time listings and categories and art design and makes everything very user friendly, though it also is a bit slow to use the software center, but for most people it's not that bad. So you got one for art and design, which should probably show GIMP in a second. So here are all the programs for art and design. You have Blender, GIMP, Blender, Dart Table. Like you have a lot of stuff. Your your entire library for this is big and also has radons to ratings too, which is awesome to be honest. So you know which programs are just plain dog crap that you shouldn't install. But overall. You also got stuff like apps for books and stuff. What should we wait for this to load up? And you have basically you have stuff like you have a lot of stuff related to PDFs, printing those entire app to read the US Constitution if you want. <laughs> So yeah, pop back out. Like you got some other stuff. Personalization ought to be a nice category to take a look at. And it should show up in a second. So yeah, so you got Ubuntu Budgie Welcome. So you got a welcome screen you can install. Got a Chrome OS theme you can install. Chrome OS themes for Snap, so make your Snap applications look more like more like good old Linux. To make them look more like good old just well, yeah. Like Chrome OS, I think this one for the that make it look like Mac OS and the Pop OS collection. No reviews yet. It doesn't. Like y'all, y'all kind of also need to know that some of these just aren't trustworthy or just aren't worth installing at all. The Yoru colors is quite an interesting one though, so I'm gonna install this one as a test. That's basically how you install them. You just click on and click install. So that will install. Just wait a second. And so, for example, we got that installed. Probably a Yoru Remix fan. And I'm going to install another one. It's basically to show off, like, the next one in the list of ways to install packages on Linux. I'm covering four in this video, if y'all didn't know. And they're all fairly easy. So this, the next one, is going to be through a graphical package manager. Oops. So now it's installing Synaptic. For OpenSUSE, your equivalent would be the YAS2 software manager. So it installs, and if you want to make sure if the package is installed correctly, just go into all, and here you see, I may have just realized I may have already had Synaptic on here, but you can see wherever you installed in here or somewhere else, like, you 
my themes, which I'm going to show you in a second too. So let's close out of that and pop it to method number two. Graphical pack, graphical pack package managers. These will look daunting at start a little, and even, but still aren't very daunting. But they are very powerful. They. Uh, for example, you can install a bunch of crap related to stuff related to amateur radio or communication or even stuff like fonts especially. And for example, let's look for gnome-tweets. So let's install mark for install. So if you want to install package, you mark for installation right there. And this pulls from the repos too. So you got a really good source of that of programs here. So if you when you're ready to install them, means you can select multiple packages too. I'm not gonna show that. So to basically, if you want to install stuff, you just do. It's basically you mark it, and then you click apply, and click apply again, and now it's going to install it. So, so this is basically like a graphical front end to APT, for example. Let's pop up a tweaks and see if the yellow colors name worked. Apparently it didn't install properly. Welcome to virtual machines anyways. But this allows you to change the theme of of Ubuntu. Let's go with this. But to go with the basically the look and feel of the rest of Ubuntu, I'm just gonna go to Yoru Dark. So your eyes are burned a lot less. As no one likes burned eyes. Burned eyes are just stupid, okay? So now the third one. This I'd say is a little easier than, than the package, than the graphical package manager. But they're basically just the same. And this is not as daunting as it as it looks, because it's really not daunting at all. So if you type in and for for package managers, you would need to be with root privileges, so you need to do su, type in your root password, which I haven't set yet. But it's automatically set it for you. No. So you do sudo su, and you go in here, type in app and apt install, and then name a package. So to show y'all, see if that's on here. Oh, that kind of also serves to bring up another thing. These, if you have like for example Synaptic open, APT is not going to work until you close it. Same with any other package manager. If you have like Yas2 software manager open, Zipper is not going to work. I, I don't think Zipper is going to work on OpenSUSE. So. 
And if you want to search for pack packages in this, you just do APT search. You want you don't need to be rude to do APT search. And so you can find these. So you just do. Let's just do app install. So it, so that's basically how you install it. You just literally you type in this whole entire command. You want to do it as normal. Let me just clear for now. Do sudo apt install. Sudo is basically the command that that allows you to run a command as as root. And to show this off, it'll install NeoFetch. So it'll do this. It'll give you some information. So pack. So the new packages will be installed. Some packages that it will suggest if you want. To that are like suggested, not going to be installed, not required, just suggested. Fault. There will also be some additional packages that will be installed. So you can, so if it asks you want to continue, it kind of does give you this off the bat. Why, why for yes and for no. I want to install it. So let's press, you, press Y, press enter. Now it's installing. So right there we got Neil Fetch. Let's just type the command in and or what pop this is what pops up. The nice thing about Linux is, if you want to run an application from the command line, unlike Windows, where you need to basically CD into basically the directory or do something like this. And fun, and fun fact, for directories on Linux, it's a forward slash and not a backslash, so it's not... You, so your home directory on Linux is not C colon slash users slash name. It's actually slash home slash name. And it's also kind of a nice thing, but it kind of does make it a little bit more confusing for people when like they're trying to get a new drive but most time new drives on most Linux systems are mounted under media and then your username something like that and they'd be listed like around here if not like if you're on a middle list distro all you see do is do a quick lsblk sudo mount Let's do, and then dev slash SDA, and dev slash wherever your USB is. So, for example, I'm just going to insert the virtual box guest editions image, and do, and do so let's do this. And do sudo mount dev. And for example, Ubuntu automatically mounts it to here. But you can always do s do this. And then just do basically this, and this corresponds to whatever's up here. And then basically whatever you want to mount it to slash mnt, you'd also need root permission to do the mount command. Probably gonna give an error. It's already mounted, but let's just do 
But let's just do, if you want to see it, you just do. Just do ls mnt and just be right there. Let's just do sudo u mount u mount to unmount something and and dev slash sda. No 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 no! Don't don't unmount sda. That's gonna screw stuff up. And now that's mounted. So just do that again. We'll do nothing. That's just a little quick quick lesson for that. I thought I'd just go over because why not? So the fourth option now is what I like to call the traditional the traditional way. And I call it traditional because that's how most people do it on Windows Mac OS. So let's pop open Firefox and and this works through on both. Or like Red Hat based distros and Debian based distros, so it'll work on Fedora, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Pop OS, Debian, whatever. Whatever that's, whatever that's the center for those two distros. So, or are those two distros? So, let's just use Google Chrome as an example because usually it's proprietary software that, that are basically that are dot the dot .db files. Let's go to chrome.google.com. Yes, Google Chrome, you are my, you are my test rat. And it'll like ask you to select your download package, so 64-bit for .db or 64. The 64 bit dot db file for Ubuntu, Debian slash Ubuntu, or 64 bit RPM file for Fedora slash OpenSUSE, and distros around that, that are based on these two. So I'm running Ubuntu, I'm going to download the db file. And I should do save file. And now it's done installing. Now you just open it. Now the right application pop up. And here it is. And all you need to do now is wait a little bit and wait for the install button to pop up. So I was pulling up this. And you just click install. And don't forget to put in your password too. And this is this part is even easier than Windows. It was because you don't have to click through a crap ton of menus. Like, do you want this installed there? Do you want this installed there? Do you, do you want a do you want a shortcut on your desktop? Do you want this do you want this blah 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 like it's that, that you don't see those prompts on Linux like those are rarely ever seen on Linux I mean the nice thing is it also gives you like what type of license it is so this is proprietary now it's installed find it over here And let's just take that to off, take that to off, and just click K. And here you have Chrome on here. So 
So that's basically that for how to install packages on Linux or programs. It's not hard at all on Linux. In fact, it's really easy no matter what. All four methods are easy. And like it and there's also flat packs and snaps. I've already went over flat packs in a separate video on how to install packages that are not in your distros repos. So you should go check that video out. It, uh, the most the Arch Linux and Arch based distros as well as Ubuntu Debian and Ubuntu based distros should have a lot and you shouldn't have much at all with the pro of a problem with installing stuff from a repository. But if you're on some, if you're on a different distro that doesn't have much in, a, in its own repositories, like Gen 2 for re for example, then you're probably going to want to use Flatpak. Now, Flatpak's a bit more challenging when you just run a Flatpak program from the command line, but same, but they're just as easy to install. But you need to go somewhere like FlatHub and install the package from there. But Overall, it's installing packages on Linux is much easier than it is to install them on Windows. That's one of the big positives of Linux. You 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 can easily install the pack like it's you don't have to click through a bunch of menus. All you just need to do is either type in a very short and easily understandable command in the terminal or go on like the software center or synaptic package manager or something like that and type in the name of your package and, and, and click install or mark for installation and then click apply not much at all you need to go through or just go on the internet and download a .deb file or .org file and I forgot to mention this for Arch Linux users well Arch Linux users should already know how to install packages on Linux but if you're using something like Manjaro, the AUR, just go through there and earn basically. Maybe I should actually explain that in a separate video. How to get how to use the AUR and stuff like that. But overall, like it's very easy to install packages on Linux. So this bullshit here. Hope to see y'all next time. See ya. If you like this type of content, make sure to drop a like. If you wanted to see more of this content, make sure to subscribe. If you don't like this content, or specifically this video, drop a dislike. And it'd be heavily appreciated if you were to also drop a comment explaining why you disliked the video some, and some issues, also known as constructive feedback. I'll see you all next time. See ya.